everybody, welcome back to Jessica's Reading Room. My name is Kim and we are here with another video book review. Today we will be discussing Star Trek Discovery Drastic Measures by Dayton Ward. I was pretty excited to pick this up. I have just recently gotten into Star Trek Discovery. Um, I have very high standards for my Star Trek. So at first I was like, no, I'm not gonna watch that. That's ridiculous. Oh my gosh, they can't live up to, to all the other great Star Trek franchises on TV. But then I watched it and then I fell in love. So I was like, okay, so now I've embraced it. See, embraced it. Um, a big thank you to Jessica for getting this for me for my birthday. So thank you. You're awesome. Um, basically, this book is about the colony on Taurus 4 um, on the very edge of Federation space. Uh, a population of 8,000 people. Their food supply has been infected with a fungal virus contaminant. They don't really know what it is. And it is ravaging through the planet's food sources. Um, they are facing starvation. Uh, Federation and Starfleet help is weeks away, or that is what they are being told. And a new governor has been chosen after a vote of no confidence on their current governor. And his name is Adrian Kodos. Um, there is going to be slight spoiler alert, uh, those who have not seen the original series. To be honest, if this spoils it for you, you probably shouldn't be reading this anyway. You probably need some more background before you read this if this is a spoiler alert. If you have questions about that, comment down below and, and we'll talk. So technically spoiler, spoiler alert, but yeah. Um, he decides that in order to save some of the people, he needs to sacrifice some of the people. So he gathers half the population and just executes them arbitrarily, done, that's it. Just a few hours later, he finds out that actually Starfleet is only a few hours away and those people did not have to die. This is how he gains the name Kodos the Executioner. Now, I knew that sounded familiar, so I went back to the original series and I watched the episode, something about a king. Okay, I don't know. Something about the conscience of a king. I think it's called the conscience of a king. Something like that. Anyway, um, come to find out, James T. Kirk, his friend Layton, one of the Enterprise's crew, um, they are some of the only living people who can identify Kodos the Executioner. Kirk's friend Layton actually calls him to uh, the planet that he is stationed on, claiming that he has found Kodos the Executioner. So I went back and I rewatched it. I said, okay, I need to get as much background as I can on this. So I did. Then I came back and I read this book, which is the actual story of Taurus IV, the fungus, and the execution. Um, I was really excited to learn about it because expanding my knowledge on Star Trek, I'm all for it. I'm all about it. Um, I did give this book three stars out of five, which means I liked it. I just didn't love it. Unfortunately, they, this book did have some flaws. I mean, some of them are a little more me. Others, I think, could be a little more on the general side. But this is just my opinion. For some reason, you guys come here for my opinion. I don't know. Maybe you're just bored. So three stars out of five. I'm going to go ahead and start with my criticisms. Then I will say uh, my compliments. Criticisms and compliments? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Anyway, so, oh, and spoiler alert, I am going to say this. Um, if you haven't seen Discovery, there are a couple of little things that I'm going to say where if you haven't at least finished the first series, there's going to be a little bit of a spoiler thing in it too. So if you haven't seen Discovery just fair warning, I'm going to talk about things that could possibly spoil it for you. So there you go. Um, okay, so criticisms. Um, something that we all, we as Trekkies, all really like about the Star Trek franchise is this idea of philosophy, ethics, morality, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the kind of things that because Star Trek is so big between books, TV shows, movies, 
they actually had the room and the time to expand on that so we could actually delve more deeply into philosophy, etc., etc. I really like that. I mean, it makes it so much deeper. I mean, we we actually get to sit and think. It's not just mindless sci-fi entertainment. And that's what I really, really like about it. Um, the only problem is that in this book, it got really, really redundant. Um, Lorca, Commander Gabriel Lorca, um, you know, he is having some very strong feelings about what's going on on Taurus IV. Commander Giorgio is, you know, coming in to try and help. Uh, she's been uh, uh, made head of the task force coming in from Starfleet to help relieve the issues. And so Lorca feels all these really strong feelings. And Giorgio tries to help him work through these feelings. And in the first conversation... You know, oh, well, you know, I've got these inner demons. I've got this inner struggle. I'm trying to get through this. I'm trying to figure this out. And then Giorgio, well, you know, you have to, you have to um, uh, stay positive. You can't lose your faith in humanity. You got to put all this aside because you've got a duty to do. And great. Okay. Awesome. Yes. We're thinking about it. We're working our way through it. Great. You're not fine now, but you're going to be, everything's going to be okay. And then not 10, 15 pages later, they're having the same conversation all over again and I'm like you guys literally just talked about this and even even the second time I would have been like okay all right but no when it keeps happening three and four times it's like mm. <sighs> okay I realize that we have not technically technically met this Gabriel Lorca all right I get that but I sincerely doubt he sits around and talks about his feelings that much and it just it just gets really redundant where I'm just like oh my gosh we literally just talked about this why are we talking about it again I mean if, if it's this much of a problem why aren't you going to find help instead of sitting around and talking about it yet again so yes so that bugged me um another thing kind of hand in hand with that I mean the fact that this book could have easily been 50 pages less easily um there was a lot of minute detail in this book. And I get that this is completely my personal pre preference. I am not a practical person. Okay, if, if you know, you're talking, if you want me to picture something, it has to be concise, it has to be simple. Because if you start overloading my brain with all these minute details, I stop trying to picture it in my head. And it just becomes a chore. It just becomes a list of details that I have to get through in order to get on to the next plot point. That's it. And I mean, I don't care how thick the bulkhead of the starship is, okay? And I'm not even talking about, well, you need this much phaser power at this intensity for this amount of time to get through this bulkhead of this thickness. Okay, I'm not talking about that. Even that, I'd be okay where I'd be like, okay, I get it. That's Star Trek. All right, yes, let's go. No, this is, we're going to describe this starship, and we're going to describe it in such detail that you will know how thick the bulkhead is as Commander Giorgio is walking down the hallway going towards this whatever room to do whatever that literally has nothing whatsoever to do with the story. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't care. I don't care. <sighs> okay, all right. And I mean, I didn't know that beige could be soothing, but apparently on the wall it's soothing. Again, I didn't know that. But there you go. I mean, hearing about three different, at least three different wall colors in the command center on Tarsus 4, I just, just so you know, beige can be soothing when it's on a wall. There you go. Um, so yeah, so that kind of got, eh. Um, another thing, and this is the one that bothers me more than anything, is the fact that there was literally no rhyme nor reason given to Kodos and his choice on who to execute to save the other half. Um, in the original series episode, Spock even talks about his own form of eugenics. Um, it kind of is touched upon in this book. Um, the only real criteria that we get from Kodos himself is those who contribute to society and those who are too weak. And that's pretty much it. Um, we get a little more 
a little bit of a look into the week because we know that there were some elderly and some kids, but not all elderly and not all kids. So I'm just kind of sitting here going, well, what were your criteria? I mean, is it just occupational? Is it just age? Is it ethnicity? Is it genetics? Is it, um, you know, the, the refugees that came later versus the original colonists? What What is this? Because in most of these, you know, crimes against humanity throughout history, at least there's some rhyme and reason, as twisted as they may be, you know, in, in the minds of the perpetrators, they make a twisted kind of sense. In this case, there was none. I mean, Kodos never goes into his criteria. I mean, at, at best, he feels a regret. I wouldn't even necessarily call it remorse. It's just kind of more of regret. But again, he never actually gets into any detail. And so therefore, it just left me feeling really empty and shallow because there it just it felt so meaningless it felt so useless and I was just like and I get that it's a tragedy I get that you know you're never going to be able to figure out why in every sense and I I get that but Kodos had reasons for doing what he did I needed to know what his reasons were why did you choose those people in the amphitheater And you guys know, I'm the kind of person where if all the loose strings are not tied up, I'm not happy. Because <sighs> I'm just that kind of a person. So in this case, it to me, it just felt like the story was incomplete because I wasn't given enough information about the initial crime. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Um, so yeah, so those are my criticisms. Unfortunately, it's enough to actually knock this down to stars. It makes me sad that that happened, but... Um, as for things that I like, the plot line itself, again, I actually was really enjoying the story. I love the characters. Most of the characters, I mean, they were awesome. I was emotionally involved. I was really, really enjoying um, kind of in my brain tying it in with what I've seen uh, for Discovery and with the original series. The way um, Ward actually tied it into the original series, I really, really liked Um you actually get to meet a very, very young Jim Kirk. Um, you find out exactly how he was able to recognize Kodos. Um, what's really nice is that Ward completely ignored J.J. Abrams movies. I was a little worried that he was going to be working under the Kelvin timeline. He was not. Thank you. That's a whole nother discussion, which we won't have here, but there you go. Um, so just the way he tied it all in to the existing um, Star Trek universe, I really liked it. Um, so yeah, so I mean, in its bare bones, I enjoyed it. But unfortunately, as Ward was filling in details and filling up the pages, it just, it's not my favorite. It's not that I didn't like it. I did actually like it. I'm glad I read it. I'm certainly going to keep reading the Star Trek Discovery books. This one just isn't my favorite of all the Star Trek books unfortunately. It makes me sad to say, but it's true. So yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. So Star Trek Discovery Drastic Measures by Dayton Ward. Um, let me know what you guys think. If we have any Trekkies who are watching, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. If you have um, a suggestion for a Star Trek book that you think I should read, please tell me down in the comments. Trekkies unite. And thank you guys so much for watching. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.